Hi, I'm Technoborg, and I'm a Canadian-German engineering student at the University of Waterloo. Operis is a project I've been working on for quite some time now, and I'm so excited to get to reveal it today. The broad strokes explanation of what Operis does is that it takes a Windows computer and essentially translates it to Linux. So that includes files, settings, and programs, with the goal being to make the transition as seamless as possible. Before getting into the details, I want to make it clear that this program is still in an early and very imperfect state, and I'll talk more about the technical side of things and future plans later on in the video. That's not to say I don't wholeheartedly believe in its potential, but for now, please look at this video as a cool tech demo rather than some sort of full-fledged product pitch. You probably already know that Windows 10 is reaching its official end of life on October 14th, 2025, when free updates from Microsoft will stop. Predictably, you know, they have been encouraging users to upgrade to Windows 11, but for more than 200 million old devices that don't meet the requirements, that's actually not an option. And so what does this mean for those people? It's not like their computers will just immediately stop working. Windows 10 will still look and feel almost exactly the same, but in the background, it won't be downloading any more features or security updates, the latter being more important long term. The end of security updates doesn't mean your system will immediately be compromised, but considering the rate at which actively exploited vulnerabilities get patched in Windows, that is a gamble that I would not bet on winning. And so for the average user, the only solutions are to pay Microsoft for extended security updates, use some unofficial and fairly sketchy workarounds to bypass the Windows 11 requirements, or to buy a completely new computer that does support Windows 11. And none of these options are great, and so this issue is what really planted the seeds of Operis in my mind. See, I've been a Linux user since elementary school, and I think it's fantastic. It's the operating system that powers everything from supercomputers, to the Steam Deck, to the French National Police Force, of all things. And a lot of people think Linux is just for nerds like me, but I would argue that that hasn't been true for a while now. Over the last few years, the Linux desktop has made massive strides forward in usability and software compatibility, and really the biggest barrier to adoption is just the process of installing it, which is understandably daunting for people who haven't done anything before, who haven't done that sort of thing before, sorry. And so I got to thinking about ways that that transition could be eased, because there are some distinct advantages that come from making the switch. The first one is that Linux distributions will almost never drop support for old computers the way Windows is doing right now. If you're not familiar with what a Linux distribution is, you can think of Linux as sort of the crust of a pizza and the Linux distribution as the flavor of that pizza. There are a lot of different distributions out there, but the one I've chosen to go with for Operis is called Kubuntu. Anyways, uh, although there are new releases of the operating system, you can more or less upgrade at will without worrying about fairly draconian restrictions on the allowed hardware. Next, uh, Linux is typically faster and more secure. This can surprise a lot of people, but Windows has a lot of uh, bloat running in the background, which really slows your experience down. Uh, Linux is in a lot of respects more optimized, and most people I've helped upgrade agree that it runs old hardware noticeably better. And you also won't need an antivirus. Linux is designed in such a way that makes it basically impossible for malicious programs to gain access to other parts of your system, at least on their own. And last of all, this is admittedly a more subjective point, I completely believe that it puts the humanity back in computing. I feel like there's some disturbing news about Windows coming out every week in my anti-Windows echo chambers, and you know, from privacy issues to just useless error codes, sketchy registry hacks, inconsistent user interface, it doesn't feel like Windows is the world's second most popular operating system because it's such a joy to work with. Now, uh, with that out of the way, let's uh, come in here and actually take a look at Operis. I'll just open up my super fancy file sharing platform. It's just a quick way to get uh, the program off my laptop since there's no official website set up yet. And once that's downloaded, I can just come in here, uh, extract, and run the installer. The parts of this process that take a long time have been sped up in editing, but the raw footage, uh, I'm going to guess it's about 30 to 45 minutes for the migration itself. 
This is also running on a virtual machine right now to make it easier to record, but there will be a demo uh, near the end that I'll show off on a physical desktop. And finally, we come to the program itself. As you can see, it's not much to look at, and that is entirely intentional. You can feel free to pause the video here and read the little spiel. I think the most important part is point number four here. Now, Linux and Windows are imperfect in different ways. While I prefer Linux, it's not objectively superior. There are ways in which it still falls short of some features Windows has. And uh, on the other hand, there are ways in which Windows falls short of not sucking as an operating system. So uh, give and take, as they say. After kicking off the process, it's hands off until the very end, but you can always check what it's doing. Let's fast forward through the next few minutes while Operis takes care of the migration. Finally, everything's been transferred, so all that's left to do now is to set a new password for my account. The reason you have to do this rather than just reusing your old Windows password is that Windows and Linux store passwords in different formats, and ripping uh, the former from Windows files is not a road that I'm willing to go down, for uh, computational reasons as well as ethical ones. And there we go. Et voilà, I'm home. Looks like my files are all right and everything is in order. Anyhow, where was I with this presentation? I'd like to talk about some of the technical details now. If you're not interested in this, uh, feel free to skip the next couple minutes. Operis is written in Rust, with most of the code being on a self-hosted Gitty instance, given that uh, Microsoft is many things, but the natural guardian of this project is not one of them. Uh, the GPL parts are on Codeberg, where anyone is free to make fun of them. Uh, there's really not much there, though. I had the idea for this project last June, uh, but I've only really been working on it in earnest since September, and it has been a completely solo project in the way that standing on top of a building is a completely solo project. So like I designed Operis myself, I wrote all the code in my repositories myself, but it relies uh, on so much other work done by so many brilliant people that I could never have done on my own. So thank you, brilliant people. If you're watching this and you're already a Linux user, you might be anywhere from uh, curious to enraged about my choice of Kubuntu. My reasons for picking it are pretty straightforward, I think. Ubuntu is not a fad, it's very stable, has good third-party driver support, and uh, on the Plasma side, it provides a familiar experience uh, for Windows refugees, and it's generally quite stable as well. Uh, the Ubuntu ecosystem also has a fantastic set of tools for automated installations, which have made my life as a developer much easier. So I am confident in the choice that I've made. I am explaining it. Uh, this is not me defending it or asking for alternatives. You know, I myself use Fedora KDE for now. I'll probably switch to something else in a couple months. Operis is not meant for me. It's not meant for chronic Linux users. And uh, there are better things we can all be doing with our time than having arguments about distros. Thank you very much. And for those of you uh, wondering if this is all just VM trickery, here is some video evidence of Operis running on an old HP desktop. And you can see here that Operis does in fact leave you with nice disk geometry. 
There are currently some sketchy partition operations going on under the hood. Uh, think SF disk move data, but I do have uh, a fully safe and incremental system in the works that will do the same thing, uh, but without the elevated risk of data loss. Eventually, I plan on doing a technical write-up about that and some other parts of what I have going on here, but that uh, also depends on the future of the project, uh, which again, I will discuss at the end of this video. With that said, now I can really just continue using my computer as usual, uh, just with better performance, some cool new tricks, and no more Windows update notifications. One of my favorite things about Kubuntu is how customizable it is, so maybe I'll make a few tweaks quickly. I've always wanted to try having my panel on the top. Maybe let's add a weather widget here, so I can see that on my desktop. Perfect. Eventually, Operis will install all the software used on Windows, but for now, things like Discord and Spotify have to be installed manually. You can play games. Uh, you can play games badly. Performance on this isn't great just because of the virtual machine that it's running on, uh, but I promise that you can run much more intensive games. Uh, for instance, I play Forza Horizon 5 uh, quite regularly on my laptop, and that's even a Microsoft game, so huh, don't need Windows for that. And you can make games. You can even do something as intimidating as venture into the terminal. Dun dun dun. Now, as previously mentioned, there are some things that Linux doesn't have. Now, none of these are Linux's fault, and I hope we'll eventually start to see companies make the switch as well, but for now, I realize that any of these could be a deal breaker for you, and that is unfortunately unavoidable. And finally, to wrap things up, uh, let's talk about the future of Valkyries. And full disclosure, I don't even know what that looks like right now. You know, there's obviously a massive amount of work left to be done, uh, features are missing, reliability is far from 100%, mm -hmm. and there are also security holes the size of Nunavut, uh, without even counting the ones that I don't know about, uh, which are almost certainly more numerous. But with all that being said, I'm arrogant enough to think that this is a pretty cool project, and uh, it might go places. So I'm busy with work and school, but I do plan on continuing full steam ahead until at least October, and I would really love to bring on other people to help me in some capacity. I will be open sourcing the code eventually, but I don't plan on doing that right away. My biggest fear is that this project blows up beyond my ability to maintain it and uh, before it's ready. I don't claim to be an expert on this sort of thing, so there may be better approaches to doing that, but I think we can all agree that people are better off using Windows 10 than something broken, and this is the best path I can see to guaranteeing that. I have also toyed with the idea of selling the software, you know, Canadian University is expensive, Windows licenses for testing are expensive, and open source projects could use more funding. But like I said, we'll see. This video was really just meant to put something out into the world and see where the ripples spread. I'll be making a prettier website soon where I'll put more information, more YouTube video uh, demos are almost certainly coming. But yeah, in the meantime, if you want to reach out to me about this project for whatever reason, uh, please send an email to hello at operis.com. Yeah, uh, with that, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed learning about Operis as much as I enjoyed making it.